The second winning series is a unique sports program that probes into the often controversial world of professional and amateur sports. Sports View Today. Everybody and welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. And I'm Bob Page. Our sponsors in the program, Al Dietrich Oldsmobile, where the runway ends, the deals begin. Uncle Al's moved to M59 just east of the Pontiac Airport in Waterford. We've got Fred Wetzel and the folks at TCOM Pagers, wide state beeper coverage wherever you're watching this program in southeastern or in mid-Michigan. Maxie's Main Street, Steve Pino and the gang in the heart of Yes Ronnie, beautiful downtown Royal Oak. Such thing. With their uh, open air cafe now doing the in relation business. to the Bob Page Hot Air Cafe? Uh, no. Now we're going to hear some uh, first class hot air because it's yes. time to plug Sports Fans Journal. Yeah, it's going strong. Even Bob Page is right. shows you hard up. I am and Denny McLean oh, still writing from jail. Yeah. Oh, where's so, my money, by the way? You'll get paid when I get good money. <laughs> yeah, all checks in the mail, right? <laughs> also, what I want to tell you is just stay tuned in a couple of minutes. I'll get the pen and paper ready and I'll tell you how you can subscribe in just a couple of minutes. And you, of course, are watching this program on either Wednesday or Thursday, so you have missed. Ron Cameron's six pound wet burrito night every Tuesday at Jalapeno Pizza and Pasta, but you'll be able Crossing to see Ronnie out there anyway on Wednesday and Thursday night. Those margarita specials, he'll be crawling out from under the tables at Jalapeno Pizza and Pasta between the it's hours nice of place. 10 and 12, right? And into the gutter where they find you outside frequently. That's where they bomb morning. page <laughs> We also have past the program sports systems, and we have uh, Joe Zimmer, you know, the folks out at Zim's Entertainment Center just Who's off he I 75. Third base no, that's Don Zimmer. Oh. We talked about him. Remember the guy with the girdle they used to wear in the locker room? I got know. some trivia questions for you today. You've been talking about this. Our guest in the program today is Detroit native John Blum, the former University of Michigan hockey star who now hockey has player. Been traded back. He did all right in Michigan. Sure, he did. He's been traded back. You now make everybody a star when Austin, come on the Bruce, show. Any kid who's playing in the National Hockey League. The National college, League? It's the National it, League, it was, it was a college star. So anyway. Not necessarily the way hockey's made up today. Oh. And we're going to get you, you could almost get your lecture the National about League. that. Then, right? All, right, all right. Now, you want to ask me some trivia questions from your era, the 30s no, and no, 40s. No, no, that's no, no. Not, that's not I was reading some suit. stuff the other day in the paper. A couple of them were on the Tiger Stadium thing. That, something I didn't know, and it just came up. Who is the, uh, what right-hand hitter in the American League has more hits in their career? Than what? Who's got more? Oh, what right hand hitter the most hits in the American career. League? In the career. In history? Uh, I don't know. You put me in the spot like this. Uh, Kaline? Yeah. Okay. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. Right. Who is the only. Oh, I got that one. I'm one for one. Okay. Who is the only. This was when you were here. Who is the only player to. Now, I didn't know this either. I didn't there's know. There's a lot of. As our I regular know. viewers know, there's a lot of stuff you don't know, pal, as you prove every time you Who open the Who is the only ball. player in, I, I believe, the American League or Major League history that's played five. With five teams, at least 200 games. At least 200 games. Uh, couldn't be, couldn't be Daryl Evans. Madlock? No, no, yeah. No. I don't know. Well, it has to be American League. I think Madlock has. Yeah. You don't know. No, who? You got it. Daryl Evans? No. I, I give up. George Kell. George Kell. That would make sense. Then, right. Now, now here's the one that wrote. These you talk about questions. the li you talk about the uh, lively baseball today, where it almost you could almost hit a home run today, and you probably would. The Chicago White Sox, the all-time leading home run hitter. I guarantee you, if you sat here from now next year at this time, you wouldn't guess it. Ron Kittle. No. Okay. Bill Melton. Bill Melton. Is more home runs than anybody in the history of the Chicago White Sox. 152 for his career. Yes. Nowadays, you're going to see that hit in one year. I think the fans are more interested 
in our breathlessly revealing the names of the individuals oh, yes. as we promised last show that Oral Roberts has brought back from the dead. Now, as you, you've all been following this. Oral Roberts claims he has brought back several people from the dead, but he refuses to name them. Well, this is the kind of show we've got guts enough to name these people. Right. Louis Tian. Well, know. no, Louis Tian's holding out for a bigger contract. <laughs> oh, no, I see. Five years old. Yeah, it was Oral Roberts offered to bring him back from the dead. Yeah. Tian said, no, I want more money first. Is that what he said? You know, he had some problems with that. his college, too, Oral Roberts. George Brunette. He's brought back from the dead, hadn't he? he no, George Brunette retired. Year? Well, six, 60, 65 years came, and then he said that was it. Uh, Doug Corbett. We Doug saw Corbett. Of the oh Orioles here last God. weekend. I mean, that's, uh, that's ridiculous. Huh? <laughs> that's almost like seeing you on the mound. <laughs> and then you've got, you got get a couple of people in the waiting, Steve McCaddy. How about that? That's he hasn't quite, Oral no, hasn't quite brought him back from the no. dead because McCaddy's still down a double A ball somewhere, isn't he? Or is it Raleigh Eastwick. <laughs> Raleigh Eastwick is, is still pitching. Pasquale Perez. Or else attempting to bring him back yes. from the dead. <laughs> he can't find him, though. He's going down the freeway looking for him. <laughs> All right, speaking of being brought back from the dead, we can get into some of the hockey issues that have come up in the past week. Your old buddy, Bob McCammon, is back in the news. Didn't yeah. he used to coach at Port Huron? Coach back in the he played Port Huron. 1947. No, 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 you guys no, no. He played together, in the, Now he's the, the new 60s. coach out in Vancouver with Pat Yeah, Quinn. you know, I think that now that's a little stability of the Vancouver organization because they've got somebody at the top that knows what he's doing. They've got a coach that knows what he's doing. The, the talk on McCammon before, the reason he didn't sign with a couple of teams because he priced himself out. But he's a pretty solid hockey man. I thought he did an excellent job in Philadelphia with the Flyers. Just did a fantastic job. You can put the camera over here as if I'm looking at the camera. And I thought he did just a see, great job see over that, there. We, we know who the camera's supposed to be on. Pat Collar, our director, has worked with you for so long, he knows better than to put the camera on you, Pat. So, now let's get on to Ad something nauseam. else. So Pat, uh, Pat Quinn, immortal, they'll do a nice job there. The immortal John Shabbat has been signed by the Red Wings. Defensive maneuver. He's a defensive centerman. He's a defensive now, last centerman. Check, they, had a goal they had 11 NHL centermen on the roster, didn't they? Oh, there's going to there's be a lot of changes on this team. What are they going to do? Right? They're talking about, first of all, the way they're talking about Joe Murphy, they think he's going to make the team next oh, year, God. and they say they're going to move him to right wing. Maybe they need some help on the right wing. When Joey Kosher's your top right wing, something's wrong. <laughs> something's desperately wrong. What I do think you think they'll you're, do? You're going to see, I, I made a comment in my last column of Sports Fans Journal that the Red Wings are going to make about eight changes next year. There'll be eight new faces on the Red Wings, but I was considering Greg Steffen as one, so I'll go back to seven now, but I think there'll be about seven new faces. Who among the centers? Traded that third string goal tender. gone. Obviously not Eiserman. I Obviously think Bridgman's going to stay another year. I think so, too. Bridgman will be back, too. So who's going to go? Billy Carroll retired. Yeah, and they signed Shabbat to take his place. Same. Yeah. Kind of, what, about, right. what about Adam Oates? What's his future? Well, Adam Oates I had a good year, I thought, uh -huh. last year. I think well, Adam Oates will be We're still talking. That's five centers right there that you think are probably going to be on the team, right? All right, but you, 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 you're you going to have the changes on the right wing. Klima, Nippertuck, whether he'll be back next year. I don't agree with that. I just well, heard Jimmy Devlin the other day saying that they think Klima's going to be a fine Kosher? player. They haven't given up on him. Joey will be back. They well, want him. There's talk that they said they want him, but I, you know, if a guy like that makes $200,000 a year, go to the nearest bathroom and do you know what. Throw you up. give up on some of these kids too quick. Give up. The guy can't I, play. He Bob. showed me at times like Well, he would show you because you don't know ability. the game. He's got some ability. Can he skate? He's not the best skater in the world. Can he shoot? Dan Maloney couldn't stand up on Bob, skates. Can he shoot? Dan Maloney couldn't stand up on skates. Can he shoot? Better, better than Dan, player, better than Dan, Dan Maloney. Be. Shoot no, better than no, shoot no. the puck better than Dan no, Maloney no, could. No, 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 no. Shoot the puck better than a bunch no, of guys no. in that league. And Maloney was big, strong in front of that coach. Can Willie Plett shoot the puck? No, not in the National League, not anymore. <laughs> but I think you're going to see what Rick Sealing will be gone, I think. A couple defenses. The Michigan State kid, Shibiki. They well, say I, he's no, a they year away. Yeah, they they scored forty some goals. Yeah, but this is college we're talking about. He'll play in the American League. You think he'll be a player? Down the road it's hard to say. Okay. I haven't seen enough of them to comment. And then I finally want to make a comment. This is overdue on uh, Dayton's joining the Midwest Collegiate Conference, the UODs, and they tried to yeah, get we Marquette did. in here. Oh, I was hoping they would get Marquette in I think there. that's a good move. This conference, you know, every time you talk to a guy like Mick McCabe, who covers the UD for the pre press, you know, he just tells you all the time, oh, this is a good conference. Oh, it's underrated. Look who they beat. Well, McCabe has a, it's a point. Oh, two years ago, they, they really, really two them. years ago. But my point is always this who cares? I don't care who they beat. No fan in this very competitive market for the sports dollar is going to want to see St. Louis University, Butler University. They're not going to want to see Loyola of Chicago. They're not going to want to see Evansville. The conference stinks. And getting Dayton into it is going to help name out schools. tremendously. Forget the Hopefully, the name Marquette, schools. Hopefully they can get Marquette in. Marquette said no. Yeah, I know that. But hopefully they can get him in some time. They said they didn't have enough time to consider it. Yeah, that'd be nice if they get him next year. You know, that would, I, really, you know, that would I, really help. I care a lot about UAD basketball. I don't like to see what's happened to it. I think Brad Kinsman and Don Siegel are on the verge of running into the, the ground. We, we keep saying this. We'll say it again. They have to move that.
I'm going to have to move that move facility. The, which is never do? You well, move the university? Then it's never going to make it, fella. Well, we'll see. It's I never going to make it. I don't know that I agree with that either. But anyway, uh, John Blum is here. Uh, played with Washington last year in the NHL and traded back to the Boston Bruins. He and Ron Cameron are old antagonists. John has agreed to appear on this program despite Ronnie's presence. And Let's I'll let, go to I'm going to get a cup of coffee while you two duke it out. But it's hockey. You should never be here when there's hockey anyway, Bob. Right after these messages. Because you don't know what the fuck looks like. <laughs> Dietrich Oldsmobile has moved to a new location, M59, just east of the Pontiac Airport. A new location, but the same great service you come to expect from Uncle Al, and the same super deals on beautiful new 87 Oldsmobiles. And now Uncle Al is proud to announce the addition of the GMC truck lineup, Jimmy's custom conversion vans featuring Traytech and Starcraft, and the classy new 88 GMC Sierra pickup. Hi, this is Uncle Al inviting you out to my new location on M59, just east of the Pontiac Oakland Airport. Don't forget, where the runway ends, the deals begin. Jalapeno Pizza is a great place to eat. Hi, two for nine smoking, please. Right this way. Wow, look at all this food. A two pine wet burrito, a 16 ounce porterhouse, and there's pasta too. But did you see the daily specials? What a deal for $6.25. See, didn't I tell you Jalapeno Pizza and Pasta is a great place to eat? Jalapeno Pizza and Pasta on Cohen Road across from Westland Mall. I'm sorry, she's out of the office for the day and there's no way to contact her. With a pager from TCOM, you could contact her anytime. I know it's an emergency, but it's out of the building now. May I call you later? With Motorola pagers from TCOM, you can deal with emergencies now. I'm sorry, our delivery man is on call right now. We won't be able to help you till tomorrow. Hi, my name is Fred Wetzel with TCOM Paging. If these problems seem familiar to you, then you need a TCOM pager. You'd be surprised how affordable they are. Probably wonder how you've done without one. Give us a call at 559-6826. Zim's just off I-75 between the Silver Dome and Pine Knob is rapidly becoming one of southeastern Michigan's premier entertainment centers. Whether it's bowling, video games, and Zim's huge arcade or outdoor sports, Zim's boasts two of the finest softball facilities going, available for your league or tournament. And even if you don't play at Zim's, you can play after the game at Club Zim's, drink specials, nightly live entertainment, and dancing. Hi, I'm Joe Zimmer. I'd like to invite each and every one of you to come out and see us at Zim's Spirits and Eatery, our bowling center, and our new softball facility. Look forward to seeing you. I want to introduce this segment. Pat, put the camera on me here. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, in the far corner, wearing blue, weighing in at 295 no, pounds, no, no. 5 feet 11 inches tall, Ron Scoop Six Cameron. Feet. Here in the near corner, the defenseman of the Washington Bruins, John... The Washington Bruins? Bruins? I mean the uh, Washington <laughs> Get Bruins. Get him out of there. Bob's drunk. Get Boston out of here. Bruins. The Washington the Bruins. You. And they have just had a very spirited, lively debate uh, while we were uh, out at the commercials. we got a show to do. Cameron, as usual, is knee-jerking talking about how great hockey used to be and John defending current game. Go ahead, fellas. Have at it. The players today, John, I'll tell you, do not have this, this, or this as much as they did 20 years ago. I disagree, Ron. I mean, the game today is a good game. There's 400 jobs nowadays. Too many stupid players playing the game today, John. Very <laughs> simple. I don't believe that. I'm with I you, John. I don't believe I'm that at all. You, I don't believe that at all. Dummy stick alike, for God's sake. <laughs> there's 120 <laughs> jobs back then. There's 420. Now, obviously, you know, there's more jobs in the league, but you can't say that players don't have this, I'm this, this. They don't have those for the most part. They're lazy today, a lot of them. Although, I will say this. In hockey... You know, the hockey players are better, better people than other sports people to interview they and things like that. They don't make a million bucks a year. No, they don't, and they basically come from bad, na bad neighborhoods. And not <laughs> they not bad, neighborhood. bad neighborhoods. Let me change yeah, that. Yeah, Warren is a high crime yeah, district. High crime. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me change that a little bit. From areas where, you know, it's a little bit different in Canada and things like that, we don't make much money for the most part. But here, of course, you came from a, it was a little different for you. You were a walk-on at U of M, weren't you? Yes, I was. You were a walk-on. Nobody thought of a thing of you coming out of school, high school. Well, I didn't get it. I could have gone in a... Got a scholarship to a smaller school, but I wanted to play. Shaw for College wants you then, or something? No, or what? A few you have a hockey team then in Detroit. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, that's about all you can act. I mean, nobody you. wanted you. And what happened? Let and me tell you. It also didn't get an offer from Highland Park Community College <laughs> to play hockey either. No, no the one way, what happened was his old high school coach took the job at the University of Michigan, brought him along on a trial basis. That's not true. That is not true. Thank you, John. My Notre first Dame, year. Notre Dame High School. He didn't coach you in high school. Well, he coached. Yeah, he coached me, but all he right. didn't come there until the second year, my sophomore year. I already made the team. My he didn't bring me. Well, he was the assistant then, wasn't he? 
after I was already there a year. I thought he was assistant. I was there two years. He he didn't take over. He took over and assistant <laughs> my junior year, and then he was head coach my senior. Year. Okay, now but so he, I was there before. I thought he, got he had a lot there. to have to do with you. No, he was. Well, well, how did you get there? How did I get there? Yes. Well, uh, a big uh, reason I got there is a uh, Dave Debaugh, Remember him? Oh yes. He came from. So he had same, an Andreas. He came Tremendous from the talent. same high school that I came from. You know, Harper Woods, Notre Dame. So. You know, he had a good career there, and my coach helped get me a tryout there. Or, That's what I thought, yeah. You know, but he, you know, he didn't bring me there. We didn't come there together. But then you, you know, you weren't drafted at all, so nobody thought much of you then either. And all of a sudden, you had a free agent. You had a heck of a senior year at Michigan, and then the, the, uh, the scouts just came flying, and you signed, at that time, a very lucrative contract. Yeah, at that time, it was, I think, the best contract ever offered to, ever offered to a college player. But that was like six years ago compared to what the free agents were making, you know, what I made compared to what they made last year and the years before. And now you've, uh, you've made the NHL and you've bounced around a little bit. You've been with three teams, actually four, because you were traded uh, back, back to one team, right? Right. But you've been with good teams. You've really been with good, good organizations and good defensive clubs. You've been basically a stay-at-home defenseman, right? Right. I've played with, uh, you think about it, I've, with Edmonton, I've played with Paul Coffey, Washington, Rod Langley, and... Uh, Boston Ray Bork, it's three of the best defensemen in the league, can't, you know. Did they work well on you and all that? Did, you, did they teach you something? Sure, well, uh, they say, hey, Lummer, give the puck to Ray and stay back. <laughs> yeah, stay I mean, back, stay at home, play don't play move. They who's, throw the, who's the best player in the guys you mentioned? Well, they all have their, um, you know, I say you got to go with, uh, you know, skating ability, Coffee. Paul Coffey, mm -hmm. you know, uh, st strength and, you know, strictly defense, Rod Langway, but... No question about it. Ray Bork is Agreed. all around the number one. He hits. He blocks shots. He plays offense. And he skates. He can skate and he's strong. He handles the puck well. Speaking does of everything. blocking shots, as you continue to make a fool out of Ron Cameron here, which isn't hard to do, tell him about Joey Kosher. I think Joey Kosher is a good player. Um, That's why I said the players today don't have the brains. No, and Joey Kosher can also shoot here. the puck, can't he? Oh, he can't shoot Joey the puck. Joey Kosher can shoot the puck. Yep, Bobby he's Pro a look at Bob Probert. In the NHL. Oh, but, but, you know, Bob Probert, yeah, he's the same cool. type of player. Well, you know? he's got a little more talent. If he'd stay out of the bars, he'd be all right. Well, you know, that's I'm not going to comment on that, but uh, <laughs> those guys are good players. Every every player can't be the same type of player on a team. Every team you fill different roles, and they're role players. You know, they play tough and they play hard. I said this before, and I'll say it again. If you gave Bud Lynch Joey Kosher's right hand, he'd be a better player. That's all he lacks. <laughs> uh, you are a, you are definitely a kind of guy who can handle himself in the NHL. You're not. How I don't you know? You've never seen him fight. We just saw him mix it up here in some of the video you, tape we're looking you, at outside. Do you know that? The and first I wanted to ask you about game. Let me tell you this, Bob. First exhibition game he played here, he got about nine fights in one yeah. game, right? Well, I was a little excited when I was with them until my first game. We were playing the Red Wings, and it was at Cobo Hall. Cobo Hall? <laughs> it was at Cobo Hall, and uh, everybody and all my friends there, I was kind of pumped up. I think I, you know, jumped Donnie Murdoch or something. Some guy that doesn't even fight. I was just at, uh -huh. you know, was, and, uh, but, you know. I was going to ask you about uh, Probert and Kozer. Two of the toughest guys in hockey, and is there anybody you fear in hockey in a physical confrontation? Well, I don't think you really fear anybody. You know, when you're out there and you have to drop, and you just drop, and you don't, you know, I don't, I'm not scared of this guy, I'm not scared of that guy. But, Did you, know, you fight those guys last year? I've never fought either one of those guys. Mm -hmm. No, I haven't. Um, I mean, there's, you know, everybody's pretty tough. Everybody can handle themselves. And, you know, there's a few killer guys, I think, out there. Who are the Who are toughest they? ones in the National League? The toughest guys in the National Hockey League. A guy I played with in Michigan, I think, Dave Richter. Oh, yeah, Richter's Richter pretty tough. from right? Vancouver. Um, Dave Brown. He's pretty tough. And, you know, a guy like Chris Nyland. I mean, every year the guy's in the top three in penalty minutes. How I mean, would you put up Joe Schoen Kosher and the only reason he stays in the league is he fights? Do you put him in the top five? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I really haven't seen Joey fight that much. Or, well, I saw Bobby Probert and Gordy Kluzak fight. It was a great fight. You know, it lasted about ten minutes. Oh, and, yeah. You know, I remember, remember that? that yeah. In the garden. And... Um, you know, I, I haven't seen a fight enough to say how good they are. What, what you should have seen, and what this character should have seen also, is the job Joey Koser did defensively on Wendell Clark. In the yeah, playoffs. exactly. Well, basically, Tell me kid can't play. Well, basically, Clark had a bad series. He was slowed down oh, with okay, an injury. That's why. Also, okay, yeah, he, had yeah, right, right. he had a bad series. He had a bad series with Joey Koser playing oh, tough. Man, yeah, that's yeah, what happened. The, the thing is, uh, there, there you go on the neighbors. They're both they're neighbors, these two, out in western Canada. Right. And the only reason Clark didn't haul off and kill them right. is because they're neighbors. And well, I, I blame Wendell Clark for that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Joey Kosher did his job. John Blum will continue to try to teach Ron Cameron something about hockey, though people have tried for 40 years now, and Ronnie still hasn't learned the game at all. Do you, know, right do you know more about the game than I do? Yes. You do? Right, yes, I just don't follow it My closely. God, don't you follow it. I, yeah. I know go more to about the commercial, game, but don't follow it closely. Go to the commercial. It's your commercial coming up. Oh, yes, after I'm ready. <laughs> then go to it now.
Hi, it's me again. In the past, you've heard a number of people give reasons why they come to Maxi's. Maybe you're not yet convinced. Let's ask a few more. I come to Maxi's because it's a really fun atmosphere, the food's really good, and I have a good time every time I come here. A lot of girls come to Maxi's to get lucky, and I did. I met my boyfriend here. For the selection of fine wines, of course. Mainly I come to Maxi's because Ron Cameron doesn't come here. Of course, there are other reasons why you should be coming to Maxi's. On Sunday nights, we feature the Maxi Jam with some of the best rock and rollers this area has to offer. Every Tuesday and Saturday, we have classics on video with Elmar. Of course, we always have our outdoor cafe open for your fun and enjoyment. And one day, Bill Sparks might show up. That is Sports Fans Journal, and it is going strong. If you'd like to subscribe for you, if you're looking for stats and box scores, look elsewhere. Old stats and box scores. We have good, hard hitting sports from people that know what they're talking about, with the exception of Bob Page. Now, our writers include Denny McLean, straight from his jail cell, and Ernie Harwell, George Kell, and a whole bunch more. And here's how you can subscribe send a $15 check or money order made payable to Sports Fans Journal, and send to this address Sports Fans Journal, P.O. Box 12170, Birmingham, Michigan. 48012, or you can call this number for more information, 350-3530. Now, our writers include national writers like Larry King, Denny McLean from jail, George Kell, Ernie Harwell locally, nationally, Bob Feller, Dick Vitale, Don Cherry, George Allen, Eli Zarrett, Mike Downey, now we go locally to Sonny Elliott, Bob Page, I don't know why I did that, and uh, I don't know why I did it either. Lynn I still haven't gotten the check, pal. You Lynn Barney, it's in the mail. <laughs> Jim North, if it's in the mail, you know, yeah. pick up your mail. And uh, Tom Lemming is our prep writer out of Chicago. Dr. Ty G on athletic injuries. Fred Smith writes, believe it or not. Of course, Bob Reynolds, over? Dave Dials, and we also have George Blaha and Vince Doyle and a whole bunch more. So call 350-3530 for more information. Or stop by your local newsstand, <laughs> bookstores, or the Tiger up, Stadium Blumber. Souvenir <laughs> Stand. Wake up. You hear John Blum snoring strong. in the background. We're back on Sports View today, and our guest is Boston Bruins defenseman John Blum out of Warren and the University of Michigan. You played with the Bruins a couple years ago, played with the Capitals last season, then you were traded back to Boston just a couple of weeks ago. Explain that. Well, um... Uh, the traded? What's the surprise? Well, I mean, you, weren't you surprised? Uh, I don't know. Yes and no. Um... I played with the Bruins like uh, two and a half years, and what happened was it just got to a numbers game, and Harry tried to sneak me through the waiver draft. Harry Sinden. Yeah, Harry Sinden mm -hmm. tried to sneak me through the waiver draft, and, you know, Washington picked me up. There was only like six guys that got picked up in that draft. I was the only defenseman, and I just had this, uh, I went there, and, you know, it was another good organization and a good team, but Terry took over as coach, Terry O'Reilly. Mm -hmm. And there was some interest that, you know, hey, he might want to trade for me back, so at the deadline there was a lot of talk. There was going to, you know, they tried to trade for me back, and it didn't happen at the deadline, and the season got over, and um, I don't know what happened. A few shenanigans go on with the GMs, and all of a sudden, I'm a Bruin again. Who did they give up it? for you? Bob Page, Jock Strap? Uh, draft choice. You happy about it? Back yeah, I'm really happy about it. We're going to take a look at you in videotape, uh, videotape right here. You got the next mission game here? A couple years ago. No, we don't have that. We're getting all the fights done. Well, that would have been beautiful. We do have him in a game against Buffalo, and uh, he's uh, number 33. It's, Boston's a much better hockey town than Washington, D.C., isn't it? Boston's incredible. It's, uh, you know, all the guys, you see guys like Bobby Orr hanging around, and Wayne Cashman, and Derek uh -huh, Sanderson. Sure. And, they're, they're, and there you are. Derek Sanderson does right the TV there, for Number him. 33 in the bottom of the screen. Yeah. And uh, we can just watch a little bit of trying to take a guy on the boards here. And uh, this coming up right here, you guys get caught up ice or something and they score a goal on you, I believe. So <laughs> you can explain that to us. Okay, I can explain that one. <laughs> Just the way you'd explain it to I your mean, coach at the time, you're right? You're a stay-at-home defenseman. What happened? <laughs> well, I, don't know. I think I had my man. <laughs> How many goals did you score last year? Two. Two, yeah. all right. Well, this is what you see you yeah. guys get turned. There you are, 33, and they slam hey, out in front. that's my partner's man right there, Milbury. They used so, to call us a stumble bump. Milbury? Defense. I thought he died <laughs> a couple you, years ago. Is he still alive? Yeah. Mike Milbury? What, still did they call, what did they call you guys? The stumble bump defense. Is that right? Yeah. And we saw evidence why right, right there, there, right, as we see the replay here again? Okay. That's Andrew Chuck. <laughs> Actually, I, Stevie has him, but watch, he kind of kicks my skate and I... <laughs> Your goalie should have stopped that point well, right there. But how anyway. can the goalie stop that? He, should, he had his glove on it, just didn't close it. We didn't cover up, That's not all. stop yeah. it on, on the rebound. You, though. as a kid growing up, I'm sure dreamed of playing in the NHL. And then, as Ronnie was saying, he was earlier, a wild man, you know, though, as a kid. You didn't this get a lot of a attention wild man. out of high school, weren't even drafted. But and yet, it seems to me you never stopped believing in yourself. And you never stopped thinking, you know, I'm good enough to make it if I get the chance. Oh, that's bull. 
Well, it's um, that's a bunch of bull. What do you mean? It's it? a bunch of bull. Well, tell me, let's face it. When you were a kid, you were just yeah. I mean, you weren't thinking the NHL. You were goofing around. That's all you did to goof around as a kid. I didn't goof yes, around. Yes, you as a did. Kid. I mean, it's always in the back of your mind. It's a dream. You like Bob said, it's a dream. Well, you, you thought know? just was was a dream. A dream, right? And then yeah. uh, at once I got to, I was a dream for me to play for the University of Michigan. You know, I, since I was a kid growing up, I go to see the you know GLI every year, every year at the Olympia. It was a dream for me to play in that game. And then I just. Uh, I mean, I didn't wake up every day and say, I'm going to play in the National Hockey League. You know, I uh, went to school, I got my degree, so I didn't fool around the whole time. Ask Ron how many degrees he yeah, has. How many degrees do you got? Uh, well, do you I, ever, I don't need any degrees. <laughs> <laughs> you were your high degree? Listen, so what? let me tell you something. What? When you were wild as a kid, a party guy, go, go How do you know I was a party guy? guy? How do you know that? Well, you used to come over to the house all the time. Well, I wasn't a party guy. You were a party. Oh, well, let's, where oh, are we going to go now? Where are we going to go now to the party? I said, settle down and play terrible. Hockey. Can you believe the, the I trouble he's giving you on this Now, come on now, admit it. Let him have it, Plumber. I wasn't a party guy. Uh, no, wow. because you can't be a party guy and play in the National Hockey League. But you got involved in some things in Michigan, so don't say that. Well, I got involved in some yes, things uh -huh. in Michigan, sure. but I, I never got kicked out of school. No, but you barely. The National Hockey League. League I've never missed a curfew in the National Hockey League. I've never been thrown in jail. Good I've never you. been pulled over for drunk driving. I mean, I, maybe I've done a lot of things yes, away with them. Well, yes, you have. We've got to get to a commercial break, but Blummer, the most important thing is you also have never been found drunk in a gutter at 5 in the morning. And that, my friend, is much more than Ron Cameron. What about Bob Payne? We'll be back to continue with John Blum right after these messages. He's drunk before the show starts. Know that 125 million Americans didn't visit a dentist last year? Why? Not money. According to surveys, they're afraid. Well, modern technology has taken the fear out of visiting the dentist. Here at my office in West Bloomfield, we've got a relaxed, friendly atmosphere. I provide the highest quality care with an emphasis on the prevention of tooth and gum disease. So if you're one of the many people not seeing a dentist, you're taking a serious risk with your future health. Like smoking cigarettes, it's a ticking time bomb. The hardest thing about coming to the Brass Bed and Leather Gallery is making up your mind. We have over 150 brass beds, iron beds, day beds with trundles, sofas, sectionals, office chairs, all under one roof. When you come in here, you don't see catalogs. You see the actual piece on display. That's real important. You see it, you feel it, you touch it, you take it home with you, we deliver it to you. We carry quality pieces, name brands only, at low, low discount prices. We're open seven days a week. Please come and see us. If you're a Major League fan who just happens to be cheering for the boys with a roar from Detroit, then there's only one place for you to be in the summertime. With Pro-Am Sports for 80 live Tiger telecast, tracking sparky sluggers around the big leagues as they eye the East for another coveted division title. That's more games than you'll find telecast on any other channel. So subscribe to Pro-Am Sports today, because when the Tigers step to the plate, they're at home on Pats. We're back with former Michigan you know, hockey you player. Ask the, John Blum, you ought to ask John the past Blum. people, for those of you people who just saw that commercial, how is it that Chet Lemon hits a line drive at the plate in Minnesota and Larry Herndon makes a diving catch at Tiger Stadium in left Simply. field? Well, 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 the magic Boston, of television, as they say, I thought right? it was a simulated game. Yes, go ahead. All right, John Blum is here. Uh, you, you, you real hockey fans will know who he is. He plays for the Boston Bruins. Most people didn't know that, though. But you were with the Boston Washington now back. What's the plans for you this year? Are you going to play regular for him? Yep, hopefully. I'll play regular, yeah. Play with uh, who? I play with anybody. Like when I play with Millberry, I usually, you know, I'm not a goal scorer. I check the no, other No, you're team's not best a goal line. scorer. We know that. Play against the other team's Defensively, best Defensively, who's the toughest guy in the league to stop one on one? Wayne Gretzky. Well, you got to. It's Wayne Gretzky. I mean. Uh, it's a dumb question, wasn't it? Yeah, you got to no. play off him. And, <laughs> you know, you see how guys, he gets a lot of room, but if you go after him, he'll make a fool of you. Uh, I mean, the guy gets twice as many points as the next guy. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean one on one's a lot different than just. Oh, you mean one coming down on you? Yeah, one on one. That's what I mean. There, one on one. There's a lot of guys. Who's the toughest? Is Gretzky the toughest? The, uh, there's ten guys who are Mark tough. Mark Messier, your uh, your brother-in-law is a pretty good. Yeah, player. he's pretty. He's got yeah. skating strong. Glenny Anderson, you saw what he right. did in the playoffs. A couple of nice moves. I mean, Edmonton's the best player in the league, or Edmonton's the best team in the league. 
Yeah. You yeah. also saw that we're out of time right here. I, want to I especially want to thank you for coming on and putting up with this, this yeah. program. We got some gift certificates for you, so it hasn't been in vain. We also want to thank our sponsors as well, uh, Joe Zimmer and the folks out at Zim's Entertainment Center, Ronnie's publication, Sports Fans Journal, 11th issue is out this week, as a matter of fact, almost a year celebration yeah. coming up here. Cool. Past cool. the Prom cool. Sports cool. Systems, we just mentioned, Jalapeno Pizza and Pasta, Steve Pino and the folks at Maxie's Main Street, T-Com Pagers, Fred Wetzel and the gang, and of course, Al Dietrich Olsenbeel sends along this bag with his company. You bet you've never been on you the show where you get a jock's craft. Ron Bob Cameron on the radio, WCAR AM 1090, <laughs> Wednesday <laughs> afternoon, 4 to 5, right in my show, Sports with <laughs> Bob Page. I'm going to show it on the air one of these days. I'm going to show you Jock's Runs on John on Blum's favorite radio station, WRIF, Rock and Roll, 101.1 FM. Oh, that's the only one you want to see. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. He's an up and down.